Hello, everyone. Thank you so, so much for attending this session and welcome to ODSC. I am so excited to share with you about the framework and the lesson that we have learned from building a generative AI application. My name is Jason Ten. I'm the founder of Engage AI. Now, before I start, I want you to take a moment to watch what Damash Shah, the founder, the co-founder and CTO of HubSpot are saying. The way that we build the software in the past and the way that software works in the past is point click, point click, point click, following a pre-configured workflow to get the things done. With generative AI is you describe something or you give them the command, the AI can do the job done. Now think about it for one moment. We are really shifting the way we interact with software. So generative AI is amazingly going to changing the way that we interact with software. Interact with Because of that, we are actually in another major technological change that we And that is exactly what we are going to talk about. And that's the thing that we want to keep in mind, okay? Now, here is what you can expect. I'm going to share with you the foundational framework for building and also embedding generative AI into enterprise system. I will also share with you the insight from the real world experience some of the challenges that we have faced during the development process so you can take away and avoid them as well as some of the lessons that we have learned along the way <clears throat> so we'll start with the foundation framework of building and embedding the keyword that i want you to remember is embedding and how do you change how do you to the schedule. This is between AI and what is between the pricing of vision the question and the problem that we are trying to solve here, the application and the problem is how can you optimize the product pricing product or solve this using the model. Now, we, you would have the data scientists and the data and building and working pricing in a way. finish doing that and after a new process to the front line, and the frontline staff will then have to go to the shell and update all the paper and all the price in the paper format. How is that different? And how embedded AI or embedded advanced analytics is different to, to the, just the AI then? Embedded AI would, however, take this updated price as suggested by the model, streamline the entire process and update the price on the fly in, in, in near, near real time without any intervention of the human or the frontline employee in between the process. So that is what we call the embedded AI. The second example is how you, you use AI or generative AI to engage and prospecting on social media. So what Engage AI does really is building and uh, developing the idea of using generative AI to draft comment to engage with the prospect as they post on the social media. AI alone, in fact, with ChatGPT, you can literally already achieve this uh, this this uh, solution by copying the content to ChatGPT, paste in the ChatGPT. So it's what two clicks already. You have to write a prompt to say, "Hey, ChatGPT." give me a comment and a respond to this content on LinkedIn. ChatGPT will draft a comment, 
and you have to copy that comment and go back to LinkedIn and paste on it. And then you have to update before you press the post button. Now, as you can see, there are literally four clicks and not a numbers of writing. Whereas with the embedded AI, you have built the generative AI right into the existing workflow and LinkedIn application. All users have to do really is just mouse over, choose the tone that they want, and all the AI magic will happen in the background by figuring out the contact and the context and combine with the tone and draft the comment right in the comment box. User can choose to update it at their personal touch and press the post button. The different, the, 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 the contrast between the two couldn't be more obvious when you are embedding the AI right into the workflow. So that is how I want you to think about the very first lesson. Embed AI will take your AI solution to, extreme, to another level by making it even easier for your user. And that is the reason why Embed AI is, is better. Because if you think about the, your front line, your employee in the call center, your employee in call center have to open up multiple screen, multiple application, multiple system as they are trying to serve the customer, as they try to understand the question and the challenges that the customer have. Imagine if you are adding the recommendation, if you are using AI to try to solve the problem in recommending product or recommending thing, but having it as a separate screen, the challenges that your employee, your frontline have to face is the increased cognitive loading. In other words, they have to digest so, so much, so much information in such a short time while they are trying to be helpful to the customer. This is why we are suggesting that the embed AI is better. When you have the AI making the recommendation and the, the suggestion, not only you want to have that to happen, but in fact, you actually want to make that decision and put that solution into the existing workflow and make the suggestion for your frontline employee, minimizing the number of applications that they have to open, number of the enterprise system that they have to open in order to digest the information while serving the customer. And that is the only time when your AI solution for their adoption will only take place and the uh, increase the adoption by your frontline employee. So how do you build this embed AI framework? for your generative AI. And that is the thing that we are going through to show you how this five-step five framework help you to be an embedded AI for your organization to help your whether your employee or your customer. Now, rest first step. We all know about the uh, <clears throat> saying, um, the, 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 the syndrome of a new product, new system. So really the first thing is I want you to identify the business use cases rather than deploying and simply adding another product into, into the, the tech stack because it's shiny object. What is important often is to identify the real business use cases. And the way that you can identify the business use cases is by understanding the organizational challenges. Decide the MVP. What is your minimum product that you can create to solve this problem? And that is very, very important for you to solve this problem. And once you have all those things, you then work backward in order to solve them. viable product or the MVP that you can develop. Obviously, with the old channel, you are working backward. These are really the, 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 the four components that you will come across. You want to think about the customer. You want to think about the stakeholder. You want to think about the IT system that will come in place. And more importantly, also, what are the data that you would have? So this 
are really the four components that you want to identify as you are working backward. Step two, this is where you want to extract and code and index the both the structure and the unstructured data into your database. So if you come from the world where the, all the structured data, this is where you will build your data warehouse, you will build your uh, SQL uh, database into the, the database to make sure that you have got the data. With the generative AI, this is where the you can really realize the benefit and all the power that you can have from the unstructured data. This is where you can load all your data. You want to extract, for example, your knowledge management system, uh, all the unstructured data into the database, as well as encoding and indexing them. This is how you take advantage of structure and how to unstructured data. Now, in terms of this date, type of the data that you have got, in terms of the unstructured, you will have your knowledge management system, your, your family ask question, your company policy, or even the internal notes that you have shared um, among the employee email, the transcription, um, as well as the, uh, the description uh, product information. So these are all the unstructured data. Likewise, in terms of the structured data, your customer information, your product information, your billing information, and those are the structured in data that you would have. The process of that is, uh, especially for the unstructured data, you really want to make sure that you have got the right vector embedding so that you can make use of the information retrieval with the unstructured data that you have as we are going to move to, to the next step. <clears throat> now, the third step in terms of the generative AI, and this is the powerful, the power of the, uh, the Gen AI is then how do you allow the user and how do you build the system that will also search for the data in the unstructured data and how you can then retrieve the result and more importantly, how you can re-rank. So search and retrieve um, is rather straightforward. You make sure that you key in the right information and let the database search for its answer. Re-rank is really the tricky part. And one of the things that we, we, we learned from the lesson uh, we, the, during the time of the development is if we were to rely on the ranking of the underlying vector database, <coughs> the ranking is not going to be good enough. The ranking of the search result is not going to be good enough. So this is where, in fact, you want to take into the account of the, your structured data and then bring some of those information to help you to rank the unstructured data. And that is only the time where you can make the search result could be more powerful. So as I explained earlier, you query the graph database for your structured data, you query your vector database for your unstructured data. Combining those two things together, this is how you would rank your unstructured data in order to get the super relevant result. Now, step four is really about inputting this search result into large language model. <clears throat> and with the large language model, you can also use uh, different LLM from different provider, whether it's from uh, OpenAI, whether it's from AI21 Lab, uh, or that is from any other provider. You can really just use the model allocation module to allocate which LLM or large language model that you would be uh, wanting to use. Um, and then subsequently, we would then want to <clears throat> put all those of those search results into the large language model so that you can allow the large language uh, model or LLM to contextualize the information and the uh, result in more of the conversational format or more into a uh, 
a language uh, structure. And this is really the step four. And finally, how you want to embed in the LM generated recommendation. The way that we often think about it is that if you build your analytic, if you build your AI system as a separately, so that you can then work independently, your data scientist, your AI lead will work independently alongside of the enterprise system and the IT team at the enterprise system where both parties will also come together to agree on in terms of like how you will be able to output the LLM generated recommendation into the underlying database. And that is really the way that we are thinking about where you could really infuse the message into the database within the enterprise system. So here is an example how engage AI or how you can build a generative AI application. What I'm showing you here, here is engage AI. As I explained earlier, engage AI draft message for user to prospect on LinkedIn. So here are the couple of lessons that we have learned so far. Number one, integrating into the existing user workflow is crucial and i want to repeat that again integrating ai into the existing user workflow is very very crucial a lot of time one thing that we have learned over the years that sometimes the adoption of the ai system or the ai solution is not great is simply because people well well the intention is good well the solution is good simply because when the ai solution is not integrated into the existing user workflow would often introduce another friction for the user and when more and more friction are introduced to the user that means the adoption is not going to be uh encouraging so and integrating into the user workflow is very very crucial second thing that you also want to make sure about the generative ai uh, application that you are building is you want to make sure that it is a painkiller and it is solving a real world problem is it really solve a real problem that your user is 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 facing so clear exactly the problem that you are solving be clear exactly who you are serving and also be clear and how, how, why do they want it? And one of the framework that we often use to make sure that it is a painkiller rather than a vitamin, we often ask the user is that how upset would they be if your solution doesn't exceed? And that is really the way that we have found to be useful to understanding where the you know, solution, the generative AI application is a painkiller rather than a vitamin. So that is the lesson number two. And lesson number three really is about moving fast, get feedback, and then you continue to innovate. Sometimes you can really brainstorm to as much as you want you can think of the best thing that you want but if the solution is not uh, the 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 answer of the user to solve a real problem for the user then that is really not going to move the needle so be clear and understanding the user need as they evolve your application also must also evolve with them and the only way to do that is constantly get feedback so you can continue to innovate now where can you embed uh, generative ai there are places that we are already seeing all these innovation are happening the marketplace so marketplace where you can use engage ai to help you writing the product description that is really one of the place that generative ai is taking place customer services customer services is really another place where gen ai could take place especially with all the frequently asked questions 
um, we are seeing a lot, a lot of innovation in the customer services uh, service space. Case management system is not a good place because often you need to write a lot of description with the help of the Gen AI or LLM that will speed up writing the description. Obviously, you have probably have seen the business communication system and also the chat application. That is where the place where Gen AI can take place. Now, to recap what I am saying today that I should share with you today, here is the five-step framework to build and embed Gen AI into enterprise system. Step one, identify the business use cases. Step two, extract, encode, and index your unstructured data so that you can make good use of your structured uh, unstructured data alongside of your structured data. The step three, this is where you can search and retrieve the unstructured data combined with the structured data so that you can re-rank and rank the result better. Find step four is how you can then input all of this information in the large language model so that it can contextualize the answer. And finally, how you want to work with the enterprise system, the team from the enterprise system to understand where in the database you can embed the LM generated recommendation. So that is our five-step framework in order to build the generative AI into the enterprise system. My name is Jason Tan. I am the founder of Engage AI and you can connect with me uh, on LinkedIn. I'm super active on, on LinkedIn. So by all means, if you want to have a copy of these um, presentation, reach out to me on LinkedIn or scan the QR code with your mobile, reach out to me and I'm gladly and happily to share with you the presentation slide as well as share with you all of these lessons that we have learned. So thank you so, so much. I hope that I um, help you to understand what are the, the, the challenges that and the lesson and how to embed generative AI for your organization and the price system to future proof the organization. Thank you so, so much. What do I, so the quest, first question that we have got is what do you use to index the data? So there are a lot of vector database in there that you can use. A uh, couple of one that we know in the market would be PyCon. Uh, the one that we highly suggest, we found it very useful is Weaviet. Weaviet is really, really good. Uh, especially if you just want to get something up and running to test it, highly, highly recommend Weaviet. Otherwise, uh, OpenAI have their own uh, embedding model as well. Um, that is another one that I would highly uh, encourage to use. Thank you so, so much for everyone who has dialed in. I hope you're gonna have a fruitful day at the ODSC. Highly, highly recommend to attend other sessions and also reach out to the organizer if you have any question. ODSC is really one of the premier um, events for the open data science. I, I have often uh, learned so much. I hope you all have a good day. And again, if you have any question or if you want to have a copy of the presentation slide, by all means, reach out to me on LinkedIn or scan the QR code. And you all have a good one. Thank you so, so much.